Hi everyone, today I want to start talking about uh, estrangement, especially this, this essay I've asked you to read, Estranged Labor. It's an essay in the sense that uh, Marx, these were like Marx's working notes. They weren't written for publication or edited for publication. He wrote them in 1844. They got stuck in someone's attic in Paris. And then in 1933, they were discovered by somebody. I mean, it's like a really interesting uh, set of circumstances. But um, uh, so if it's a little difficult to read, it's not really written for being read by everybody, at least not in this format. So uh, we can maybe give them a little bit of, uh, cut them some slack there. Um, nevertheless, we got to deal with the text as it is given. Entfremdung is the word, that, the German word that is translated here as estrangement. Uh, the same text has been translated as alienated labor. So uh, alienated or estranged, uh, what do these things mean? Well, they have a slightly different meaning, but they, I guess it's, it's, they're similar enough. Estrangement just means separated, right? Just like, so separated. Uh, alienated means, the Latin word for alien is other, right? So alienation, alien is just other. Uh, and so it doesn't have all, it's not like this spooky sense, it's at least not right off the bat. Uh, estrangement, alienated, making other or making separate. Now, if we understand this, uh, this just in terms of like a physical separation or a physical otherness, we will have only done like maybe a, a, a small fraction of our work, okay? So, because the spatial distance, the spatial separation between me and my work or me and my labor is only is only like a, a moat of dust of uh, Marx's meaning. And the real important sense is not just a physical separation, but a separation between me and the thing that I am. Okay, so I mean, it's like a one might say a metaphysical separation. Marx would hate this, but let's let that ride for a second. There is, I, I am like a creative power. Humans are a creative power. I am a creative power. I am a power to change and augment my world, change and expand my freedom. But because of the ownership of the means of production, I am unable to do so. So I, my creative power, is made different from myself, made other from myself, is separated from me. I cannot be the thing that I am because of the ownership of the means of production. I am separate from myself because of the ownership of the means of production. My being is different from me because of the ownership of the means of production. Okay, so alienation and separation it happens like right here, right here in, in the person, right? So it's not just a that... A thing I make is like in some other state being sold on another shelf or something like that. That is an important thing, but it's only a fraction of it, right? So what am I such that I am estranged from myself? Well, this is what I want to try to get at. And I, I've already just indicated it. Like I'm a creative power. Marx says that we don't have an essence, right? That, that our essence comes back at us from the world, from the materiality of the world. And so... You know, I am not anything in particular, but I, I am a power of engagement, right? Humans are a power of engagement. And as a power of engagement, we are able, we should be able to engage the world in a certain way. What Marx is saying is that this, this institution, ownership of the means of production, private property, this institu institution prevents me from being creative, prevents me from being augmentative, prevents me from being the thing that I am, okay? So this is what we got to try to understand. Um, so typically, you know, it depends on who you ask, but typically this estranged labor essay is broken down into like four different modes of estrangement, four different moments. I mean, they are like this. We can't think of one without all of them. Uh, but it's good to just maybe walk through the four different modes and see if we can understand them si singly. I would argue that there really is this, well, maybe one mode called species being estrangement. And that species being estrangement uh, really contains or 
is is like the the general sense of estrangement, and the other modes that we'll talk about are like you know beneath that categories of it elements of species being estrangement. But you know that's for you to figure out if you'd like. Uh, I invite you to determine that uh, for yourselves. The four modes of estrangement that marks. Uh, that are usually given in this, this essay are product estrangement, process estrangement, species being estrangement, which I just mentioned, and estrangement of man from man, excuse the gender specificity, uh, this, it's the nature of the translation, uh, or estrangement of, from others, right? So I want to go through it and look at each one of these individually and see if we can understand what Marx has in mind. And I want to get to it by way of an example that's kind of abstract. And honestly, you know, I feel a little embarrassed doing this because this would be the, uh, the worst way to, to understand Marx from Marx's point of view. Some sort of abstract thought experiment is, well, abstract from the material world. And then is, so it's, it's free to kind of make its own reality or whatever. So Marx would be um, unhappy with this sort of uh, tact. However, uh, since he's dead, uh, and I'm hoping that he's not going to come and haunt me, I'm going to go ahead and go with this way, because I think that it is helpful to understand what Marx is talking about, okay? So, the four modes of estrangement, we're going to start off with product estrangement. Uh, Marx says that, that he starts off this part of the essay by saying that nature is, the, is a means of life, and he means this in two senses. The second sense he mentions, I'm going to deal with first. It's, I think, more obvious. It's that nature is the, the source of our, our sustenance, right? Nature is the, the source of our raw materials of life, right? Without stuff, we wouldn't be able to, like, eat and have shelter and clothing and, and live, right? So nature is the means of life in that sort of obvious sense. It's, it is that from which we live. The other sense, the first one he says, but the one that's really more important here is that nature is a means of life in that nature is the source of our actualized essence. Actualized essence. That is to say, nature is where I actualize, I, I, I bring into reality the thing that I am, my essence. So nature is a means of life in that it is the place where I bring into reality the thing that I am, the source of my actualized essence. So what does that mean? So to get to this, I want to I want to take the, I want to do this little thought experiment here, and and this will help I think uh, get a toehold on what Marx is talking about. Uh, do you ever see that Tom Hanks film uh, Castaway? Uh, if or what is it on the island by himself, whatever it is. Uh, the, yeah, and if you haven't seen it, you can just think of, like, being on an island by yourself, right? You wash up on an island, and there's just an island and you, right? So this is where we start. Now, I'm standing on the beach of my island here, and, you know, there is just the woods, right? There's no, there's not even a pathway. There's not even an emblem of uh, human, human life happening here. So I can't just walk the path that's there. Uh, there's no path. So, what am I got to do? I got to, you know, I'm on my island by myself, so I am called to do something like this. Nature calls for me to engage in it in such a way that I build a shelter, right? So I build a lean-to, I get some sticks, and I do that. So let, let me think, let me, let me point out this. Like, when, I, when nature calls for me to build a shelter, that is to say, my creative energies enter nature and thematize it, Right? What kinds of things am I going to use for my, my lean-to? That huge boulder that's 800 tons? No, because I can't move it. So nature becomes like just whittled down into those things of nature that suit my purposes. And the other stuff sort of recedes. So nature becomes thematized in a way that when I was just standing on my beach looking at it, it, it was just like an amorphous like forest or woods or like uninviting anything. So it gets thematized and I, and I bend and I twist and I cuss and I swear and I got myself a, a lean to now. And well, here's the thing. I'm done. I got a lean to. I don't go start to make another lean to. Why? Because I'm done. Right? So 
the important one of the important things that we want to think about here is that why did I why did I work? Why did I engage nature? Because there was a need that I had that that thematized nature, and then I I worked it up such that that need is now answered. And that means that my work is done, right? So my work was organic in that, why am I working? Because I need it. And it's organic in the sense that, why am I done? Because the work is finished. I don't keep doing it. <clears throat> second thing, I mean, not second thing, but also here, when first my, my island was just like, Nothing, a mass of, of, of woods and me and ocean behind me. So, like, like it, it was just like, a, uh, you know, it had nothing to do with me. But then I built this lean-to into the world. And this changes everything. It changes everything because now there's a center. There's a center in my island where there wasn't any place. Now there's a lean-to. That's home. And everything else on my island is relative to my home. So this, this, this changes my, my world. It changes the, my island. It makes it, uh, there makes it an orientation.